Hi, I'm Alexine Farrell Falmouths, occasionally also known as Alvy Blake, and I am the author of My Mechanical Romance, as well as the Atlas series and Alone with You in the Ether. So I'm here to talk a little bit about my writing process, which has seen a lot of changes throughout the last couple of years. They've been sort of um, big years for me, um, one might say, and uh, I have really found different ways that work for me. So I guess the first piece of advice is definitely never consider anything that I say prescriptive. Your writing process is yours, and don't lie, you are a writer if you're watching this. Just so you know, you can go ahead and call yourself a writer. Um, so when I wrote My Mechanical Romance, I was basically, I had been kind of given a prompt by my husband, who's a physics teacher, and he wanted me to bring more girls into science. And I took that as a, as a, you know, to throwing down the gauntlet. I was like, absolutely, I'm going to make science so sexy and nerds are going to be so hot, um, which is actually quite easy to do because they are. I actually wrote this story at the same time as I was editing Alone With You in the Ether and um, had just released the Atlas Six. So I had a lot of like sort of sciencey things going on in my head, things that I was thinking about, but I was also reflecting a lot on my experience as a teenager who was, I would say, sort of pushed out of science. I was sort of shown the exit doors. <laughs> many times in many different ways. No one said like get out of here, but they did it in, in little ways by seeing the different girls in my class sort of fall away and follow other interests and realizing I was one of the only ones left and people's perception of me was that maybe I was less competent than my male peers. So I was kind of leaning on my inner child and my, uh, my younger perspective to write a character who didn't necessarily know what she wanted to do with the rest of her life, which is a feeling I think that all of us are familiar with. And at the time that I wrote this, I hadn't seen any traditional publishing success and wasn't sure if there was space for my voice, which is very similar to the journey that Belle goes through, um, just with her her identity and, and wanting to please both her parents, but feeling like she doesn't yet know what her path is or if what she feels passionate about is something she can turn into a career. I wanted to create this message that, you know, you know, life is long and you can change your mind and and while it is scary to change your path sometimes it's really worth it and you should go with things that feel right even if they also feel difficult so that was kind of the the mood I was going into I'm definitely a mood writer I'm definitely a pantser um, I like to call myself a, a reformed pantser and that now I write with a slightly skeletal outline um, so I like to know at least where the major plot beats are with romance that's pretty easy because most romances have sort of like a three-act structure um, that where you're supposed to encounter certain things at certain times you know it always ends with a happily ever after there is some some sort of conflict. So knowing that those were there um, and writing towards those beats was a really helpful way to do it. But also young adult romance, the word counts are much lower than adult fantasy where I could sort of go on forever about the meaning of life. Um, in young adult you kind of have to get to the point. <laughs> which I'm not doing right now. So I essentially would just sit down, write. I spent a lot of time writing scenes that are kind of like, you know, in fanfic we call these the fluff scenes that are just the, the having lunch with your friends, the getting ready together, the, the feeling of being a teenager. I wanted to recreate that because, like I said, I write for different audiences. And when I'm writing for my young adult audience, I am writing for that teenager who wants to see themselves on the page. It's something that I would have wanted as a teen. And so I did want to take my time with like, what's it like when you're sitting with your friends at lunch? And yes, you're stressed. And yes, you have a crush, which is like the most stressful thing. But also you're enjoying your time with your friends. You enjoy your time with your siblings, even if they're terrible, you know, because they all are. Um, and, and how to deal with the different conflicts of just growing up. And in terms of the actual writing process, one of the first things that I encountered um, as, as a person who was trying to be a writer that was very difficult is the anxiety of the blank page and feeling like you want to translate the very complex scene you have in your head onto paper and it's like, you know, you're envisioning Da Vinci and then it's a stick figure on the page. 
Um, but the good news is that you can fix the stick figure. You can you can expand on it, but it has to exist first. So for me, you take the pre-writing away, and so it's just sort of work through, get it on the page. The first draft is really just telling the story to yourself, um, making sure that everything is there that needs to be there, because you can always build it out later. Um, or lots of times if I had a little stumble, then I would just write like, you know, come back to the scene. There should be, you know, a romantic scene should be here. Write in some, some tension. You know, the 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 Pride and Prejudice like hand touch put some tension here um, and that's future Alexian's problem it's fine it's fine the book got written um, and so I, I rely a lot on revision uh, on editing I have a four draft process so the first draft is just getting it on the page the second draft is filling any plot holes so I do the first draft and then without rereading anything, I think about what might be missing, what could strengthen these arcs that I maybe uh, didn't know were going to pop up until I wrote them. So then it's just a lot of adding stuff in, um, the constructing the framework, I guess. And then in the third draft, that's when I read it all the way through and cut the stuff that doesn't fit or, you know, rewrite the scenes that need to be slightly different. Um, and then my final draft is when I read for proofreading for typos and stuff like that. And that's a process that works really well for me. But I'm definitely a messy drafter, and if you're the kind of person who has that fear of failure sitting on your shoulders, you know, that like, oh, if I'm not going to get it perfect, then why should I even try? I definitely recommend, don't go back and read the stuff you just read. You're going to find flaws. The first thing you do, it's not going to be perfect, and it is going to bum you out. So you might as well just keep moving forward, and then you can work with the final book when it's done, when you can really improve it. Thank you so much for watching. I hope something in there was helpful and My Mechanical Romance is on sale now.